Okay, and now, and we are now live on Facebook. And ladies and gentlemen, it's another bright uh, afternoon, uh, Thursday, 30th of, 30th of April, uh, and we are here at the Sandbox, uh, ready to present to you another webinar. We have two amazing experts that are going to talk to us about uh, finance uh, and how to raise money and uh, governance, uh, why you need to have your governance systems ready to receive funding. The key question and the key question you're asking is, is your business ready to receive funding? Uh, and the answer is your business needs to have good governance structures um, and your, you yourself as an entrepreneur need to have a finance ready mindset. Uh, so if you can hear me, uh, let me see by a show of hand um or by chatting us on the box um show of hands or chatting us on the box and saying i am here uh, we'd like to know where you're joining us from and we'll be engaging with participants uh during this uh during this time um online and today we'll be asking about what kinds of innovations you are currently doing uh, what kind of innovations are you currently doing uh, because we'd like to be able to hear those innovations and use them to be able to encourage other participants uh, to, or, and other entrepreneurs to also innovate. Um, so once again, thank you very much for joining us um, uh, and for being a part of, uh, a part of our webinars. I run a real estate business, but things aren't going so well. I'm getting tired of searching for the right answers online. Looking for the right help from one office to the other is very hectic. Look no further. We have the most convenient solution for you. Introducing Sandbox, the village formula. A one-stop shop for SMEs and entrepreneurs, whether you're running your business from home, in retail, medicine, or manufacturing. We'll take your business to the next level. presentation about uh, the, <clears throat> the, the sandbox uh, which is who is hosting me today uh, my name is Chris Odongo uh, I'm an expert based here at the sandbox uh, a director of wild international which is our partner at the sandbox um, let me take this opportunity once again to wish you a good afternoon and to welcome you to our webinar I can see we already have uh, 12 participants online. 
Uh, if you can hear me, let me see you raise your hand. Um, or let me just see you also chat us on the chat. You just tell us uh, again where you're logging in from. Um, and specifically today, as we engage, um, I'd like to hear <coughs> from our participants, what are some of the innovative things that you are doing in your business uh, at this particular point in time? Uh, this morning, I was talking to an entrepreneur who was in the travel and hospitality industry. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, they were expecting to receive tourists from uh, uh, our source markets, that's uh, Europe, um, and all the tours that they had arranged this year have been postponed, uh, cancelled, and so he found himself uh, having none at all business. Uh, and even the people who were supposed to go on holiday over Easter, the local tourists that were booked, uh, all those bookings were cancelled at the last minute. And so he found himself uh, running out of business, and what he has now decided to do is he has looked at uh, his skills and his uh, capabilities, and he's now beginning to offer uh, services for people who want to take their kids uh, to learn online. So he's providing you with the technical equipment to allow your children to learn better online. So he's selling uh, digital cameras, um, uh, webcams for the computer, selling you computers, computer accessories, uh, Bluetooth speakers, so that you can be able to have a better online learning experience for your children. So that's what he's doing. Um, and it also sort of just gave us ideas on what to tell entrepreneurs um, in terms of how to respond right now is you can start by looking at what are some of the other assets that you have, what are the other skills that you have, what are the other interests that you have, and begin to innovate. Um, and we are saying now start looking at every opportunity, uh, start looking at what is happening as opportunity. And so start asking yourself, where are the opportunities, where are the things that I can look at in the market, instead of just looking at the crisis as there's a crisis. Um, and so right now, as I say, and as, and as has been our practice, uh, over the next 10 minutes, we'd like to hear from our participants. We want to engage with you, we want to hear what are the innovations that you are having. So if you are here, uh, if you raise your hand, I will be able to allow you to talk and we can hear what the innovations you are. And of course, we also want to hear where you're logging in from uh, and about your business. As I said, this is that time in the seminar or in the webinar when you've come into the conference room or you've come into the workshop and you're greeting people. So uh, let me see. Thank you very much for joining us, Sarah, Stella, um, Kathleen. Thank you very much for joining us. I think this is a, you are a repeat participant. Uh, we're glad to see you back. Uh, Chilande, thank you very much for joining us. Cynthia, David, um, anyone who wants to speak uh, and is ready to speak, if you raise your hand, I'll know that you're ready to speak and I'll allow you to talk. Um, otherwise, I'm, we are, I'm, I'm very happy that you can be able to join us at this point. Anybody can raise their hand? Can I pick on somebody and just ask them to say hi? Let me make an attempt. Um, let me ask David Masai. If you can hear me, David Masai, I've allowed you to talk. Let me hear what you have to say to us today. Uh, what I think I'm just. Vision we are doing. David, proceed. Hi, everyone. Hello. I can hear you, David. Great. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, the topic of discussion today about uh, building business resilience, I think it's something critical whether we're in business or we look after business. Uh, personally, I manage strategy and planning at one of the state corporations and uh, in the country. And I think also the topic still remains relevant because I'm in charge of shaping the future of the corporation. And uh, just tactically helping the corporation be able to navigate in this time in terms of how we manage our people, how we manage our resources, uh, how we able to support the national government uh, in the course of this pandemic. So what resources can we be able to mop internally and be able to appropriate national government to manage whatever we are going through? Yeah. And the best post uh, this uh, <coughs> pandemic, how will the cooperation look like? So for me, uh, the, the topic of today around business resilience remains relevant and that's why I thought it was relevant for me to plug in. And I'm looking forward to the discussion. 
and the learnings. Thank you very much for joining us, David. Um, right, um, I'll be coming back to the, to the participants, uh, but before I do that, let me invite our panelists to give their opening remarks. Uh, let me start with Lucy Njoroge, who's our governance expert. Uh, Lucy, just one line opening remarks to welcome the participants today. So thank you so much, Chris. Uh, my name, as you've heard, is Lucy Joroge, and uh, I run Business Deepening Hub, which is based at the Sandbox. It's a governance and consultancy firm that uh, provides audit, training, and implementation of governance principles in businesses so that they can achieve sustainable success. True to the village philosophy at Sandbox, Business Deepening Hub collaborates with experts in various fields to build sustainable businesses. I am a certified accountant and a certified uh, secretary, and I'm happy to be with you today. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, our other panelists, Stephanie, please say hi to us and welcome the participants. Uh, just one line, uh, telling us, um, yeah, tell us, say hi. Opening Good remarks. afternoon, everyone. Uh, so glad to be here this afternoon and uh, looking forward to uh, great interactions and conversations. My area of uh, expertise at the Sandbox is in uh, finance and uh, particularly in investor readiness. And this is a conversation that we are going to be having this afternoon uh, in alignment with the current time. So looking forward uh, to this session and uh, welcome and uh, Let's 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 learn from each other. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Stephanie. We are glad uh, that you made time uh, for our attendees. I'm looking for what are we currently doing in terms of innovations? Um, so let me look for somebody. Since uh, most people are not raising their hands, I'm going to have to just take a huge bet and invite somebody to speak. Um, let me invite Anne Komira. Uh, Anne Komira, are you able to talk to us? I've allowed you to speak. If you can unmute yourself, just tell us where you're joining us from, what company you're running, and what are you? how are you innovating to survive? What are some of the things you're doing? All right, Anne is not able to speak. Um, let me see the next person down the line is Asha. Asha, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I can see that this is not, this is like the third or fourth time you've been here. Uh, let me try and allow you to talk today. Um, Asha, if you can unmute yourself, you can speak to us and tell us what are you guys doing to survive? Uh, how are you innovative? Uh, if you can't speak on voice, you can also take, talk to us on the chat uh, and tell us where you're joining from and what your, what your, what your innovation is uh, currently. All right, um, Asha is not able to speak. Uh, what is your innovation currently? We'd like to use those examples of innovations that you have to be able to inspire other participants and to be able to inspire people uh, to do uh, different things. Okay, um, so going down to the, towards the bottom, uh, let me invite Stella uh, to speak to us. Stella, if you're able to speak to us, I've allowed you to speak. Uh, just tell us where you're joining us from and, and what other innovation you are applying currently, if you're able to speak. Okay, thanks, Chris. Hi, everyone. My name is Stella. I run Crystal Clear Coaching and Consulting. Uh, right now, I'm mostly focusing on leadership and management training. When it comes to finance, um, right now, it's more or less a bit quiet because most of the companies were not able to. The particular client I was working with, um, we're trying to work on an online system. But when it comes to finance, basically, I could say I don't have anything that I'm, I'm working on right now. Thanks. Thank you very much, Stella. Um... Christopher, uh, let me allow you to speak and tell us a little bit about, tell us where you're logging in from and tell us what are the innovations that you are applying in your business. 
Right, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Karani. I, my company is Workforce Africa. We are a HR consulting firm. We do mainly outsourcing. So uh, we have been doing outsourcing for also logistics firms, uh, like the riders and the van deliveries. I think the innovation that we have done or trying to set up rather is um, instead of only managing the riders for these companies, we are also have set up our own riders. So you say, for instance, we have small shops and um, retail outlets that want to deliver their customers. They can call us directly to, to deliver for them using our own workforce riders. So that's how we are trying to, you know, kind of plug the gap, yeah. All right, okay. Thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, and also thank you for joining us again. I remember you were here the last time, uh, and we appreciate that you've come back. Asante Sana. Um, our participants, again, thank you for joining us today uh, and coming on to this webinar. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about money uh, and governance, uh, and those two go hand in hand. Uh, but before we do that, let me look for one or two more participants to engage with us. Remember, you can engage with us on the chat uh, by telling us uh, where, you're, where, where your company and where you're joining from. Uh, let me allow you, Jackie Suma, to talk. Uh, Jackie, please talk to us. You may unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Hi, Chris and Lucy and Stephanie. It's good to connect with you guys. I'm, I'm Jackie Suma. Actually, I know uh, Joram and the team there quite well. Uh, we go way back, but I, I saw you guys on Facebook and I thought I'd just, you know, jump in and, right, um, you know, just, I wanted to understand uh, the question you're asking about innovation is what is for us to share what we're doing with regards yes. to innovating in this new, is it in any particular sector of the, of the organization or? Just whatever innovation you're doing, we're just asking people to share what okay. innovations they're doing as a way of inspiring other people. Ah. Because when, when somebody says this is what I'm yes. doing, sort of normally yeah. connects in the minds of somebody else. Oh, okay. Oh, if, if that person is doing that, I think I can do this. So uh, we're encouraging. Great. Oh. Yeah, so, mm. Okay, great. Well, I, I can show what we're doing. I run actually a real estate coaching company and now, uh, you know, it's more scaling up a, a digital um, marketing company because we discovered that of course for our clients they're in real estate and they also have they also do short-term rentals and they they needed a way to pivot because now you know short-term rentals are now at a stop so just really encouraging them to look to turn to short-term to long-term rentals at this time but also at the same time open up additional income streams through you know creating virtual products right and um, and that is, it's been a great help actually. We have one client that uh, you know has three properties in three different countries, but because of the slowdown, decided that she's going to. She has another business that's on location. She's actually based in Australia. She has another business that's on location in Australia, where she does corporate cleaning for organizations. And because they didn't have a shutdown, she still is going out to do work. So she decided, actually, one thing she can do at this time is to, um, you know, pivot and, and, and grow a business to teach other people who would like to start a local service-based or, you know, care-based, personal care-based business, whether it's, you know, being a nanny, being a cleaner, be, either for corporate or individual clients, being a daycare, that type of thing, because she herself has been able to achieve that. So that, that was just one example. I think I wanted to share that it's really, and she does feel, you know, super excited, super motivated. It's just one example, because there's others who have also chosen to go online and, you know, maybe offer their coaching online or offer their, their service to clients who are not necessarily located in the same okay. place as them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to that part of the webinar where I share with you something about the sandbox. Um, and today I'd like just to show you um, a very interesting thing is, and if you look at the screen, these are all the partners that we have at the sandbox who are ready and interested in serving you as our customer. Um, we divided them into four different areas. Um, the first area is the value engine. 
uh, and on the value engine we're saying these are partners and experts who are able to help you develop a clear value proposition for your customer uh, starting with research uh, understanding your customer and understanding your market segments uh, to product innovation in terms of just uh, creating a, a clear product uh, and a value proposition around your product uh, and, 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 and coming from now that I understand my customer, I understand where the, my customer segments are, then I can create for them a product. And also then going back again to research to say uh, how many customers are actually there in the market and then CS consulting with customer service, uh, helping you to define a very good journey where your customer is going to be served at every touch point, how they're going to be served uh, to business strategy, uh, where, the, where we help you to develop a clear uh, strategy to uh, to win in the market. And that's what we're calling the value, the value engine. And then uh, we also have the capital engine. Uh, and the capital engine has to do with the finance and accounting, uh, keeping your books and being able to report on your numbers uh, in a very accurate way. Uh, investor preparedness, where we are able to get your business ready to connect with investors and help helping you to fundraise so that you can be able to get the capital you require to grow. Uh, audit and tax, uh, where you're able to prepare your books for, re, for, the, for, for return, make sure that the books of accounts are actually reflecting the true status and tax planning. And then collections and debt management, where we are helping you to structure the flow of money from people who owe you to people who you owe in a way that is structured. Um, that's on the capital engine side. Uh, we also have what we are calling the efficiency engine. And for the efficiency engine, we're talking about making your business professional, making your business uh, run smoothly. And we have IT, uh, IT, an IT expert who helps you think about the IT products that you need in your business to make your processes uh, faster. Uh, we have process and quality helping you to document your uh, your process manual and develop uh, what is called a uh, operations manual for your business and ensuring that you have quality in terms of consistent production of uh, goods and services at the same quality and then governance uh, which is what are the governance structures that you need to put in your business to trust and to enhance accountability and then legal uh, there's an in-house lawyer human resources there's a hr expert who will help you develop job descriptions uh, hr policies performance management and we have a startup uh, partner who helps you if you have a startup and you need to, to know exactly what how to make your startup succeed uh, and then on this other side we have what we call the market engine and with the market engine you're talking about anyone who is helping you to connect to your customers so we have marketing and marketing plans we have digital marketing which is using digital technology to connect uh, we have brand strategy and brand design uh, which is basically just giving you a good image uh, we have public relations which is connected you to the public, and then we have our sales expert. So these are all the experts that are available here at the Sandbox, and we invite you to connect with them uh, during this time. And that is really just what I wanted to share with you about, uh, uh, about the Sandbox today. Uh, and as I said, uh, today's topic is about, uh, today's topic is about uh, money, and we are largely talking about uh, two things we're talking about governance and we're talking about um, and we're talking about um, readiness for investors are you ready to receive uh, investors in your in your business and what we're trying to say here is money helps your business to catalyzes growth in your business so you can be able to buy an asset uh, you can be able to finance your working capital and money comes from investors. But investors want to have confidence in your business. They want to be able to trust that when that money comes into your business, it's going to be put to the right use. And that's where governance comes in. And so today we have those two presentations, how to be ready for investors and how to have the right governance structures in my business. And we're going to start with uh, Lucy, who's going to take us through governance. Uh, and I'm going to invite Lucy to put up her presentation. Uh, and as Lucy puts up her presentation, uh, let me remind you as our participants, please uh, put your answers for us in, I mean, questions in the Q&A button that's at the bottom of your screen, um, comments in the chat so that we can be able to just know what value you are getting from this uh, 
from the from the sandbox and from the webinar. We'd like to know uh, what you're learning. So put that in the comment section. Uh, Lucy, I'm waiting for you to put up your presentation. Um, you haven't seen it. Okay. Yes. No, I haven't seen it. Um, I'm waiting for you to put up your presentation. Um, yeah. So comments on the chat box, and then um, yes, there you are, Lucy. Okay. Um, that's that's the that's the Facebook page. That's the Facebook page. That's the no, Facebook no, no, page. No, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, let me just go back here. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, participants, if you can share with us on the chat, uh, tell us about your business. One of the things that I've been able to see happen in this webinar is people are able to connect to each other and are able to, um, able to actually exchange ideas. So, please tell us about your business on the chat, uh, and we will see how you can be able to network. Uh, Masi Nyate says that she's happy to join this webinar. She's an accountant, started as a side hustle, but today she's offering bookkeeping services to SMEs and preparing financial reports and filing tax. Uh, so please uh, reach out to Masi Nyate on the chat. Um, um, Lucy, you need to, when you click yeah. share screen, you need to select the PowerPoint. Did you already yeah. open your PowerPoint? Yeah, let me just open it here. Yeah. Okay. I've opened it there. Yeah, so share screen and then click on PowerPoint. Can you hear see now? Not yet. It's not yet. Uh, it's not yet loaded. Okay. This one's kindly excuses as we sort out this technical hitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Stephanie, are you ready to present? So perhaps we can start with you, and then in the back end, we shall uh, come back to Lucy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not coming. That's okay. So, yeah. Don't worry, Lucy. Is, ready. is it there? Okay. Is there. It? Yes, there it is. It's there. Yeah. It's there. Okay. Okay. Right, Lucy, yes, please yeah. proceed. Yes, we are there. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Okay, what is governance? Governance is the system through which organizations are managed, controlled, and are held accountable. Governance has been there over the years, but over the, very, over the last years, it has become very important because of the crisis and scandals that have happened. What the regulators and the government have done, whenever we have had crises and scandals, they've gone back and look and addressed and seen what caused the scandal, what caused the crisis, and they have come up with regulations and governance, governance regulations, which, have, which in future, if applied, will help organizations be stable and run well. Our country has not been left behind because we have also had our share of uh, crises and scandals. Not too long ago, we had Nakumat and Uchumi, which went under. We also have had banks. We had um, Chase and Imperial. And we also have a number of non-performing loans. And the reason, one of the reasons is due to governance. So governance is becoming very critical and uh, it's important for us to, in, to understand what it is and apply it in our business. We have uh, about 10 parameters that have been developed on governance. And we can start with uh, the board of directors who are appointed to run the organization on behalf of uh, the shareholders. We have another parameter, which is performance management and controls. We also have ethical standards and values. We have legal and uh, statutory requirements, which uh, includes compliance. We also have corporate culture. We have disclosure and trans transparency. We have risk management, and we have corporate social responsibilities. You may ask, how, is this, how does this apply to SMEs? 
But I believe that even if you start your business today, governance is very critical. You look at ethical standards, how you run your company in an ethical way will mean whether you draw some certain customers or not. So it's important even as we begin our business to think of governance, the only thing will apply what is applicable. And as we grow, take in more and more, more of the governance structures. I'll share now the, I'll pick some of the parameters and share them with you in, in, in more detail. The first uh, parameter that I would like to share with you is the board of directors. The board of directors are appointed by the shareholders and they run the organization on behalf of the, of the shareholders. A good board of directors will be composed of a good mix. It will have uh, both genders, it will have various disciplines, it will have the young and the old, so that when they sit down, as you can see them there, they will bring every area will be represented because everybody has a perspective. And that once they sit there, they will make better decisions because of their composition. Some of the, the functions or, or some of the roles of the directors include uh, establishing policies and procedures, developing the strategy, hiring and firing the top executives, explaining farm performance to shareholders. And this is what they do in every AGM. They decide on dividends depending on whether their organization has performed well. They approve the annual budgets and monitor them uh, uh, either monthly or quarterly to ensure that they are, by, they are meeting their targets. They also approve the, the CEO, they assess him and they give him all the support to run the organization. Leadership is critical because it sets the pace. So it's important that uh, you have it composed properly and you have it running properly. And we want the, the board of directors to be very agile and uh, on top of things, especially at this time, so that they can ensure that the, gov the company runs in a smooth way. The next uh, par governance parameter that I would like us to look at is uh, stakeholder management. And we can begin with the external stakeholders. External stakeholders include our investors who are checking on us because they may be interested in investing in us. We have the community. The community gives us a right to trade and to operate. We have trade unions, especially if we have uh, employees who belong to the union. We have our government who gives us uh, regulations. We have our suppliers who give us um, our goods and services. We have our customers who we have lent, uh, uh, who, who uh, buy goods and our goods and services, and we have our creditors. It's very critical to manage them, and especially during these difficult times, give them concessions where they need or also ask for concessions, because if you manage these external stakeholders well, they are going to be your marketers. They will be your brand ambassadors. So ensure that uh, you manage your stakeholder man very well. This is done by mapping them and then looking at their various needs and then seeing how you can plug in. The next set of, of stakeholders are our internal stakeholders. And when I, we look at our internal stakeholders, we have our staff and we have our shareholders who own the organization. The staff are, are one of the biggest assets and we need to ensure that we manage them well, keep them happy, let them know that they can trust us so that they can run the organization on our behalf well. So let's not ignore them, ensure that they feel secure and feel, ensure that we have onboarded them properly so that they can uh, be innovative and give us all the support that we require. The next parameter that I would like to look at 
is a risk models and uh, risk management is very important. Whether you're a big organization or a very small organization, it has become very clear that uh, we have to look at risks and manage them. And this begins by identifying all your risks, internal and external, assessing them, seeing what you need to, to whether you, can, you need to take that risk, and then coming up with mitigation policies, and then uh, monitor them as you go along. Uh, normally, I find that with small organizations, uh, they, 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 don't, they want to take the minimum risk, uh, or in, if I give an example of, say, insurance, they will insure their vehicles, but they will not insure themselves, which means they are exposing themselves in, uh, to, to risk in case something happens. So ensure you identify all your risks, keep assessing them, look for mitigants, and then monitor. And more so during this time of uh, of crisis, we have seen more risks have, have, cre have crept in, and we need to ensure that uh, we manage them so that uh, we are not affected. Then I would like to look at compliance. Compliance is very, very, very critical. And when I think of compliance, I think of uh, the external compliance where we have, our we have the regulator, we have the government, we have to pay tax, we have to file our, our annual returns to the register of companies. We have to ensure that uh, everything is, is compliant so that we are not, uh, we don't fall in the wrong side of, of, the, of, of, the, of the government. Then internally, we have to ensure that we have internal policies and procedures which help us to meet the external, ex external external requirements. Normally I have found that uh, uh, when, when crises happen, even the int internal policies and procedures that we have set, we ignore them. So those small things that you have set, like doing bank reconciliation, preparing certain returns, ensure that they don't fall away because they are so critical. You do not want to have internal crisis and also external crisis ensure that all the things, all the rules, all the things that you have prepared and ensured as an organization that these are our rules and uh, our policies and procedures, ensure that you are compliant, starting internally and then moving to externally so that you mitigate any problems. The next parameter I would want to look at is not really a parameter, but uh, it, touches on to everything is the IT and business continuity plan. And uh, with technology taking center stage and with everything hinging on it, it's a time to embrace it and to look at processes and procedures and consider automation in order to ensure business continuity. So just look at your processes you, and see what you need to automate. It may start with a, the smallest thing as having an online banking platform so that you do not have to go to the bank. You can do all your, all your transactions online. So start, you don't have to be an IT guru. What you need to do is look for a collaboration so that you can begin to uh, use IT to ensure that you have business continuity. And especially at this time, which looks like uh, this will be the norm going forward. Our next uh, parameter that I would like to look at is ethical leadership. And ethical leadership includes uh, not giving bribes, running, you know, following certain values and ensuring that we, we run our organization in an ethical way. And we do not want people to have any perception that we are not running our organization in an ethical way. Ethical business has many advantages. It means you become more profitable. You protect your brand and your reputation. It gives you a right, it is the right thing to do. It earns your customers' trust and loyalty. And it 
gives investor confidence. So it is very, very important. Uh, and even especially at difficult times, when it's, you are running through difficult times, sometimes you feel um, uh, you, want, you want to change and they maybe take cut corners, but ensure that you run, you ensure that, uh, ensure that uh, even in these times, you run an ethical organization because ethical business is very, very important. Uh, you may lose deals, you may lose good employees if you don't run your organization in an ethical way. Now, I would like to leave you with a part in short uh, uh, by Alfin Toffler, and he says, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Forced hibernation may not put, may put us down, but it offers an opportunity to lead our businesses innovatively. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Lucy, for that short MBA on governance. Um, participants, as I said, uh, please tell us on the chat uh, what you're learning, what are some of the lessons you're picking up. And if you have a question, please put it in the Q and A button. Um, I can see Kathleen has raised her hand. Does that mean, Kathleen, that you want to say something? Please raise your hand again if you want to say something. Um, Kathleen, you've disappeared. <laughs> All right, uh, Linda, I'm going to allow you to talk before we go to our next panelists. Linda. Yeah, so I would like to say that presentation was good. And uh, I would like to, I have, I have learned a lot about the governance and that uh, it was short and it was good. So keep up, that's all I just want to say. All right, thank you very much, Linda. Uh, Catherine Wairimu. Uh, wait, Catherine Wairimu, you've disappeared from my... Uh, okay, uh, Catherine Wairimu, you may say something and then we go to our next presenter. Okay, thank you so much. Apology for that raised hand. I didn't know it had raised itself. Now, thank you so much. I've really learned a lot, especially on the areas we need to check on, like the bank reconciliation, tax, <clears throat> tax reconciliation, things that we can really, really ignore at this time. And wow, I've learned a lot. Thank you. I really need to look at that. I think I was looking more on the external stakeholders, but I was not really concerned more about the inward. Thank you so much. I... Yes, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, Janet Onyango, speak to us, and then we'll go to the next presentation. Janet. Hi, I would just like to know once and for all, because I'm hearing many different versions, what is the law concerning the registration of a sole proprietorship as a limited liability company? What is the law concerning registration of a sole proprietorship as a limited liability company? With one director. Uh, uh, so we'll come back to that. Lucy, we'll be able to answer that, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me allow you to answer, and then we'll go to um, we'll go to the presentation by um, by Stephanie. Lucy, over to you. Yes. Uh, these days, you are able to register your organization as a company and just be one shareholder and one director, just like a, a sole proprietor. The only thing, again, when you become a company, there are many things that uh, come in. Uh, so that's what you need to know, but it's possible. Yeah, so we can chat later. Yeah. Okay, I think to, it's just also to add to my voice is that when you register as a sole proprietor in the law of sole proprietorship, it's an unlimited uh, situation where you can be taken as an individual all the way to to the courts to answer for the liabilities that the organization takes. But when you register as a company uh, and you incorporate a company, you're allowed to incorporate it as a sole director and as a sole shareholder. But within that, then the company takes over all the, the liabilities and they don't come to you. But yes, you can also lose, reach out to Lucy for further guidance. For now, allow me to invite Stephanie to put up her screen. Uh, Stephanie, please put up your screen. Uh, Right, there we go. Uh, and then you may now then proceed with your presentation. 
participants, please put your questions in the Q and A, and we'll come to them. Okay. Okay, uh, good afternoon uh, once again. Um, yeah, as uh, mentioned earlier, my name is Stephanie. Uh, my background in finance and, um, and uh, having been the, working in the financial sector for 10 years in uh, credit and risk analysis. And uh, basically this is uh, what I do to support um, entrepreneurs in uh, getting investor ready or to access capital. Uh, we recognize that uh, every, for every uh, business to be successful, uh, whether you're starting or you're growing, uh, access, access to finance is an integral aspect of every business. And we champion this course in um, uh, pretty much uh, try helping, equipping you to be able to put your business together to access finance from investors. Okay, Stephanie, please proceed. I'm going to move to the next slide and uh, use your arrow button. Yeah, I'm not responding. Um, there you go. Sorry, try again. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so what we do at Upscale is that um, Upscale uh, uh, exists to support uh, entrepreneurs by providing capital and advisory services for business entities uh, looking for funding to meet their financial obligations. Uh, that could be in terms of working capital, in terms of uh, uh, general investments in OPEX and CAPEX, or commonly referred to as capital expenditure and operational expenditure and uh, just for the businesses to be able to scale up. Uh, so our mission being to help entrepreneurs uh, break the bottlenecks that they encounter when accessing capital in order to scale up their business ventures. Um, uh, just to share and highlight by Venture for Capital uh, survey, which was con conducted in 2011. Uh, and this is a body which uh, champions the, the venture capitalist uh, organization in how they support entrepreneurs and the challenge which was uh, seen highly that entrepreneurs are facing is uh, accessing finance is number one. And uh, this is the question at, at Upscale, we are working with entrepreneurs in helping to uh, answer this uh, uh, question because it comes with a myriad of uh, uh, myths around it. Uh, so there's, there are so many financial providers, why is it so hard to access funding? So we sit and uh, identify where you are at and uh, pretty much try to see any gaps which are there so that you can be able to uh, get the funding that you're looking for. Uh, the objectives uh, working with Upscale is that, uh, like I mentioned, we are, we are uh, geared towards helping you identify those gaps where you knock the doors and get rejected. Uh, to help you also focus on your business, on your core business, because again, chasing after investors can also be time consuming and they uh, can lead you to losing focus in, in uh, running your business. Again, we help improve the acquisition process in raising fund funding and uh, we seek to find the fit uh, solution for you because not every financier out there is suitable for you. Uh, and of course, we have been able to support businesses to scale up and uh, have had some businesses actually uh, kickstart and, and, and are operational. So how we again, we do this in uh, four levels. The first level being uh, uh, at investor readiness clinic, we are identifying what really your pain is at this level and uh, trying to identify really, do you need this capital or do you just want to, do you just need to reorganize your, your top and bottom lines uh, because sometimes there's usually a story in between and maybe uh, just putting that together, uh, you may not even need external funding. And if you really need funding, then you move to the next level. Uh, and uh, here we, 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 we work with you in three stages. The first one being preparation. And we have a checklist in which we get to uh, take through your business and see whether you're in alignment with what the investors are looking at. 
Uh, so uh, that's uh, preparation. Then the next level being uh, packaging. And packaging uh, basically is putting together the documentation that investors or financiers uh, need to see so that they can uh, actually look at your in uh, investment as a potential one to input their money. And then thirdly, promotion. So promotion, we are putting your investment out there for the investors and financiers to know that uh, your, your opportunity is existing and they can actually step in and uh, partner with you. And then connecting with capital, we champion the process and of uh, actually uh, the conversation with the investors and becoming your advocate uh, in that process, uh, explaining all the technical bits uh, in raising capital, interpreting the documents, uh, the term sheets, uh, and, and, and all that. Then we run also a masterclass. Uh, if you're looking to raise capital, you want to understand all this, uh, the journey from uh, getting ready so that you can attract capital, uh, how to really come up with a business plan or pitch deck which speaks to the investors, interpreting the documents and, and this is something that uh, we also support uh, entrepreneurs with. Uh, coming to today's topic, uh, SMEs have been hit uh, in one way or another. We have seen the downsides. Uh, I'm sure we have had so many uh, around this and most of them being the collapsing demand uh, as a result of a uh, low purchasing power that uh, uh, customers are experiencing because of low revenues, uh, people are losing jobs. Uh, access to inputs uh, for those in manufacturing, which has led to low inventory levels, uh, so they cannot op operate at their full potential. Uh, management of the work environment, which again now we uh, as businesses you have to consider so many factors on how you are uh, considering the social distancing or the PPEs and all the equipments that we have to put in place to still be operational. Uh, we have disrupted uh, supply chains because of uh, airlines. If you're in export, you're not able to get your goods out there. And transport even locally is also affected. Entrepreneurs, some of them have had to really run at a low uh, production levels, or some of them have had to shut down, unfortunately. Uh, and of course, uh, with regard to accessing funding, um, the financials also have uh, been uh, very conscious, again, also as they advance funding, because uh, there are also risks involved because of the way things are running uh, at, at this point. But we also see the upside in that uh, we are seeing some st uh, stimulus of industries to meet the current demands uh, or the manufacturing that is happening for the PPEs and all the, the masks and, uh, and all everything that um, uh, mostly is considered essential. Uh, and this can be a good trade even for as a country that uh, we could actually become self-sustainable if we are to adapt uh, the new way of doing things. Embracing new methods of delivery and for every SME is a call to action that we look for different ways of uh, meeting actually um, uh, the needs of, um, of uh, our customers because uh, people there's very restricted movement and uh, uh, we all have to look for ways of how to deliver our services uh, or our products to our customers. Uh, being innovative, reinventing the world uh, so that you can be in alignment with the current times. And uh, what the financials are doing uh, specifically is also uh, devising ways of how uh, they can also support uh, SMEs uh, during this time. And I'm gonna be covering that in this session. So I just want to bring us to uh, our, our, an industry outlook, which was done by Moody's uh, some times back with regard to the COVID-19 um, uh, impact, uh, the potential impact on different industries. Uh, and, and as we can see that uh, they, are, they, class, they did a classification of uh, the different industries in three parts, the, the high exposure. And these are, oh, these are the uh, industries which have really been hard hit by the current uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, the low exposure uh, mostly are the ones are, which have been referred as essential services. And uh, actually, if we can say that they are the winners at the time, and then now uh, the moderate exposure have been hit, but uh, to some extent, if they can be able to look deeper in their risks uh, and manage their risks well and try uh, mitigate them well, uh, they, they still can be uh, still operational. So um, what are investors looking at? And uh, I'm speaking with regard to the current uh, scenario of what is happening right now. Uh, first, um, risk assessment, as I just mentioned in the previous slide, uh, as a business owner, you really need to be uh, to understand what uh, risk uh, areas that your business your business has been exposed to, 
and the mitigants that you are putting in place to be able to uh, to, to 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 cover to cushion yourself from this risk. So looking at um, the the best and the worst scenarios, or uh, or what we refer to as a, doing a sensitivity or scenario analysis, in the best or worst scenario, what can really happen? This is something that really you should be able to understand and explain uh, to an investor or to a financier. Uh, and how you are covering uh, those risks, uh, potential risks. Uh, priority sectors are, or the essential services, again, uh, this is a conversation you can have with financials or investors, and they're looking at your really immediate financing need in terms of uh, maybe working capital or bridging the gaps of uh, paying employees or just meeting uh, some gaps that you're experiencing right now. But your business is vibrant, and of course, this, these are areas that they are very interested in uh, engaging in. Entrepreneurs' resilience. Um, this gives uh, financials and uh, investors a lot of confidence. And as we have seen, um, uh, when the, the pandemic started, some businesses uh, we have seen them resorting to shutdowns. And the very reason is Sandbox we are having this conversation of resilience. Uh, if if your business is still operating irrespective of the crisis and you are really looking at how best you can be able to still remain productive, that is a very good uh, sign right there for investors. So investors are looking for entrepreneurs who are very resilient and who are very committed to running their businesses. Again, and then thirdly, the contingency plans that you are put in place are you are pro uh, you are not producing the way you are productive before. Uh, but still, you are still operationals, and this is actually what will inform any restructuring that may be required. Uh, so what short-term or long-term plans have you placed uh, in your business so that, uh, uh, so that you can still remain uh, relevant and operational? And investors are very keen to understand that you actually may, uh, put measures uh, with regards to the same. So to conclude, Include, um, uh, what I would advise is, is that and what we need to keep in mind is that uh, we really need to manage uh, our cash flows very keenly, very uh, uh, wisely. Uh, have open communications with your partners, that's from your staff, uh, as Lucy has mentioned, the stakeholders. And uh, we are living in times where people are very understanding because uh, there's a ripple effect. Everyone is affected by the current uh, crisis. And uh, so uh, do not hesitate and hold back and not uh, wondering how to communicate with your, even if it's your landlord or whoever it is, have open communications and come to uh, some sort of understanding with all your stakeholders. Um, if you have any head, uh, you had any uh, expansion plans, uh, please hold unless that is going to translate to some cash flow in the next three, six months or so. Uh, because you don't know how long this should go. But if it is still at, in alignment with what we are referring to essential services, you are still uh, good to go. The new experiences that you're seeing financial institutions, institutions give to distressed uh, customers around uh, moratoriums or commonly referred to as debt holidays. So talk to your relationship managers in the banks and uh, come to an understanding. If you, are, you need to restructure uh, your debt or, uh, but again, also, if you don't, if you if you don't really need to restructure, because again, that also comes with cost. The longer you extend your your facility, the interest uh, aspect also uh, is onboarded. So, I uh, think through that, uh, we are seeing also a reply for CRB listing, which has been a concern with most SMEs. Uh, reviewing asset uh, management plans uh, for banks is something they are doing with SMEs, uh, and uh, mostly. Are reworking your business model because maybe how your business was operated before the crisis may not be sustainable with the current times. So you need to realign your business model with the new reality and establish new milestones, which are going to inform again also the restructuring uh, in uh, when when you are having a conversation with your financials. So lending is still happening, very relationship based. Again, uh, you have had a very good relationship with your financials. Uh, of course, it becomes easier to have a conversation on how the best they can support you. Uh, and again, look, they are also looking at a business model which you have really researched. So you need to be able to support uh, your business model and how best you think it's going to work for you to still uh, be uh, running, uh, to be sustainable in your business. 
So all in all, financiers are in the business of making money. That's the truth. And they continue to avail funds. Uh, but of course, industry-based uh, industry Essential services uh, seem to be really winning here. But again, if you can still, like I mentioned, if you can work uh, your business model and be able to align yourself and cushion yourself with the current uh, uh, downside, the downtime, then you you still uh, you, you also stand chances of being able to access funding. So in case of any support, you can reach out to Upscale and uh, we can see where you are at and uh, see how we can support you through the journey of raising capital. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Stephanie, for that presentation. Um, participants, uh, we're glad you could uh, you could listen to that. Uh, we have two questions on the Q and A chat, um, and, and as I said, participants, please put your questions in the Q and A chat. Um, uh, I think we'll start with Stephanie's question. Uh, Stephanie, if you can bring back your slides and show us the Moody's chat. There's a question there that asks. Where is where does entertainment, uh, performing arts and theatre fall in this chart? Remember that Moody's chart that had low, moderate, high. Uh, where does entertainment, people who are doing theatre, where do they fall in that chart? Uh, if you can be able to respond to that, and then Lucy will come to you. Uh, how do we improve governance when I'm a single director company? How do we improve governance when I'm a single director company? Uh, so that's a that's a yeah. So please go ahead, Stephanie. Um, okay, looking at the chart, uh, it may not really, um, it, it lies under moderate uh, exposure. If I am um, to classify it as uh, media, uh, and uh, entertainment uh, can, it, it, it really depends on how you're delivering your kind of entertainment. Uh, for example, if it was a case where you were holding events and uh, you know there were gatherings, of course, uh, to a great extent, that uh, may be affected. Uh, but if you are doing the kind of delivering, uh, delivering your entertainment online, then that's that, that that's different. And and perhaps this would be a good time to see whatever it is that you are doing, uh, the kind of entertainment you are delivering. Uh, is it something that you can move online and still be able to share with your customers? Uh, because at such times like this, where uh, gatherings are not, uh, there's restriction to gatherings, but you can still be able to reach out to your customers or your clients uh, online, then you can pretty much try to see how can you leverage on technology and still be able to reach out to your customers. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Lucy, how do I have governance in a one-person company? Thank you for that question. I would say, first of all, begin with uh, acknowledging that governance is good and it makes business sense, and then begin the journey of governance. And it will begin with, uh, first of all, ensure that uh, you have proper records, policy and procedures, ensure if you have staff that you have uh, put them, uh, you know, you know that you are treating them well, you onboard them properly, give them contracts, ensure that you are run, running an ethical company, ensure that you are stakeholders, you are managing them well. Even if they will not be as complex as a bigger company, they all these, the, the shareholders, the regulators, the risk, all those things are there. It's just that you need to do them, start, start them in a small way. So we are happy to help you in that journey, but uh, begin first by acknowledging that it's necessary, then begin steps. They, we say a uh, journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, then start with your step, yeah. Thank you. Right, okay, thank you very much. Um, our participants, are there other questions that we have raised or comments? Um, more questions and comments, please put them up on the on the chat so that you can be able to see what your comments are. Your questions, please put them on the Q&A so that you can be able to respond to them. If you'd like to speak to us, please raise your hand up and I'll be able to allow you to speak. Uh, we are now going towards the end of our webinar uh, for today. Uh, and I'm going to allow maybe one or two people to speak. Uh, so if you raise your hand up, I will know that you want to speak and I'll allow you to talk. Um, otherwise, right now, let me make a 
short presentation uh, about on our closing, our call to action. Um, make a short presentation on our call to action. Um, we are asking you, are you ready to go back to work? Uh, are you ready to go back to work? Um, that's, that's our big call to action. Are you ready to go back to work? And we're asking you to consider the following things. There's going to be a new normal. Uh, social distancing, uh, temperature checks, healthcare costs are going to be higher. There's going to be new human behavior. So are you ready to go back to work? Um, secondly, have you told your customers that you are actually going to go back to work? You know, um, a lot of people closed and went to work from home uh, and did not stay in touch with their customers. So you need to be able to tell your customers, look, when things open, you are going to be going back to work. So you need to start having some advanced touch with your customers. Uh, for employees, we are asking you, what are the new skills that they need? What are the new working terms? Uh, you start thinking about that. And for your suppliers, how efficient or how effective are you going to have them? And what are they going to do for you so that you're able to go back to work? Um, our call to action is uh, we're asking you to engage an expert. Uh, we are available to offer you one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, uh, consulting. We can be able to help you develop your readiness to your readiness to go back to work. Uh, we can help you to be able to look at the areas of governance in your business. Uh, we can be able to help you to look at uh, how to get investors for your business, whether it's preparing business plans. Uh, we can be able to do that. Uh, we have experts at the sandbox. And for any other expertise, as I presented before, we have many experts that we can be able to help you. Also, we're inviting you to attend our webinars every week. Uh, on Wednesdays, we have strategy tips at 9 a.m. and on Fridays, uh, we have expert tips, uh, like today we had uh, governance and we had uh, uh, investor readiness. Uh, next Friday, we're going to be having digital marketing uh, and ICT, and you don't want to miss that. We're going to have digital marketing and ICT, and during that webinar, we're also going to be announcing uh, a series of trainings on digital marketing that are going to come for entrepreneurs over the over the rest of the year so you don't want to miss that webinar and we're also inviting you come with a friend to our webinars uh don't come alone tag along another entrepreneur and come with them and pick up some some insights um otherwise as we draw towards the end of our time today let me take this chance to thank you uh thank you for your for your comments and thank you for attending before i invite our uh before i invite our to give their closing remarks, I'd like to invite Eric Kinoti to speak to us. Eric Kinoti is one of the experts here at the Sandbox, uh, and Eric Kinoti had a comment to say about uh, governance and investor readiness in as uh, in, in in connection with uh, in connection with uh, I think it was uh, anyway. Let me allow Eric to speak. He had something to say about governance and uh, investor readiness. Eric, if you're ready, you may unmute and show your picture. Okay, thank you for, for this opportunity, Chris. The presentation was well done. Thanks, Lucy and Stephanie. Uh, mine is just to reiterate that uh, as you get, uh, just to say what Lucy, echo what Lucy and Stephanie said, the, as you get ready to attract financing, you have to ensure your businesses compliant from a financial perspective and a tax perspective. So before you even start that discussion with uh, potential investors, it would always be good to have conduct like what we call a due diligence, either from finance perspective or a tax perspective. So mine was just to reiterate that. Yeah. All right. But well okay. done the presentation. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, tax due diligence, you don't want to invite investors into your business and then they discover that you have a tax liability that you had not declared. That is going to be a recipe for disaster. Uh, our participants, we've come to the top of, our, of the hour. It's three o'clock. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to spend the next 10 minutes uh, fielding questions uh, fielding comments, uh, allowing you to interact with other participants, introduce your business, uh, tell us where you're logging in from, uh, tell us what you're doing, uh, share with us what you're doing for innovation. 
we're going to do that for the next 10 minutes. Otherwise, if you had planned to leave at the top of the hour at three sharp, feel free to drop off. Uh, the panelists are going to be here for the next 10 minutes. Uh, together with myself, we're going to be engaging with you uh, as you leave. As you leave, please remember to give us your feedback on our, on our feedback form. Uh, it's there uh, on the chat. You can click on it. Or when you close your Zoom window, please look out for your browser. The feedback form will open on your browser. Um, as I said, we will have ongoing webinars, uh, continuing next week strategy. And on Friday, we'll have expert tips. And next Friday, we have ICT uh, and digital marketing. And we'll be announcing for you uh, some trainings that are coming up for the rest of the year uh, next week uh, on digital marketing. Otherwise, thank you very much for coming. Let me now invite our panelists to give some closing remarks uh, as we draw to the very end of this webinar. Uh, let me start with Lucy. Uh, Lucy, a closing remark, please. Thank you, so you so may proceed. Much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, I hope that you have found it useful. We are ready to answer any other questions that uh, you may have. Uh, you have our contacts. But thank you so much. And I've enjoyed being part of this today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me now invite uh, Stephanie to give us her closing remarks. Stephanie. Yeah, um, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you all for being part of uh, this uh, webinar and trust that uh, you have picked uh, one or two things that you can apply to your business. Uh, I'll close with a quote by Jewa uh, Truly, is he, is an American writer, and he said, persistence and resilience only come from having been given the chance to work through difficulty problems. And we are living in those difficulty problems. And the reason why we are having these conversations at the sandbox. So uh, let us not look at these times as, uh, as just as uh, the, from the negative aspect at it. Uh, it's through the resilience that we work through during these times that we will even determine our crossing over uh, to the next uh, uh, life after COVID. So I would encourage us uh, to take this time, not really to rest, but really to look at our businesses and see how to best uh, package them well so that we can be able uh, we can be ready for the uh, the comeback when uh, normalcy uh, when when normalcy uh, returns. Thank you so much, and uh, we continue to engage at some at some. Uh, thank you very much. There's one participant asking for this slide. Uh, are you ready to go back to work? Uh, there it is. These are the things we're asking you to think about as you plan to go back to work. Uh, as we said, over the next 10 minutes, we are going to be continuing to field your comments and questions, uh, even as uh, other participants exit. Uh, again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, for those of you who are coming back again, uh, Asha, Sami, thank you very much. Kathleen, Catherine, Christopher, um, Eric, Faiza, thank you very much for joining us for a second time. Maureen Nafula, um, one, our number one fan, thank you very much for coming. Um, yeah, so, and the rest of us who have come for the first time, uh, it's good to see you. Thank you, um, Jacqueline. We're glad you could join us. Uh, I think uh, you, uh, you said you're in the real estate sector. Um, thank you. Hope, you. hope to see you next Wednesday or next Friday um, on these webinars. We'll be having these webinars um, every th Wednesday from strategy tips and on Friday uh, for expert tips. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you'd like to say something as you exit, remember I said, this is like attending a seminar. And when you attend a seminar, you, what do you do? You, as you exit, you sort of say hi to people and you greet them. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, I can see them waving. Thank you very much, Phil here. Thank you, Christine, for that wave. Uh, please write a comment on the chat box as well on the, on Facebook Live uh, so that you can be able to hear whether uh, what you learned. Um, and as you leave, please fill the feedback form. If you can't fill the feedback form, leave us a comment on the chat telling us what you learned and what you're able to pick up. Uh, we're very happy that you could join us. Um, as I said, the next 10 minutes, we're just fielding questions uh, and comments from uh, participants and interacting with our with our panelists. Um, so let me circle back to Stephanie and uh, Lucy. 
Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say? This is now just that part when you interact with participants, uh, you say something that is residual or you, or you, or you add a point or two. Um, if you have anything, I'm, I'm circling back to our panelists as I wait for our attendees to raise their hands and tell us something or to say something on the chat. Um, so our panelists, do you have, uh, let me start with uh, Lucy. Uh, Lucy, talk to us, tell some participants something even as they exit. Uh, I would like to tell them that uh, governance is just is not just for the big companies, but even if you start your business today, you can think governance because it makes business sense. And uh, even just like somebody said, when you are, you might say you don't like math, and uh, but when you are you pick a chair and you want to put it through uh, a door, you have to measure the door and the size of the chair so that you see whether you feel that and you're using maths. So even when you're doing business, even when you're interacting with your friend, governance is coming to play, but you don't think of it as governance. So I would say embrace governance and uh, start building your structures so that you can build a good company, knowing that you want to grow, you yeah. want to have investors and what they will look is how you run your company, which is governance. So, Karibu to the governance world. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Stephanie, say something. Participants, yeah. please note this is the time to also talk. If you raise your hand, I'll allow you to say something, uh, whether to introduce yourself or whether to just say what you learned. Uh, but right now, let me invite Stephanie to say something. Yeah, just um, to add on uh, the investor readiness bit, um, uh, the, the most, of course, uh, this is a conversation that can be uh, quite wide, but just to summarize the key aspects that uh, investors uh, would be looking at and which you can be looking at your business right now is, of course, first you as an entrepreneur, uh, in that you have the right uh, resilience and uh, the answers to your why and the vision and the big picture of the business that you want to run. That needs to be very clear. And then again, your business model also needs to be uh, looked and worked very well, show how you are making the money in the business and how sustainable it is. And when it comes to working out the figures, uh, like uh, the, 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 the financial modeling bit, um, also, the figures really need to make business sense. You don't uh, put figures for the sake of uh, making it look attractive. Uh, questions will arise on how really those figures are going to be sustainable. So these are things that uh, I would uh, request that we be looking at and at our businesses right now, uh, whether we are having to work or our, 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 our remodel our businesses or how they are running, uh, so that really we can see that we are running uh, really sustainable uh, businesses. Again, also how they are governed, uh, as Lucy has shared, because this becomes a very key aspect uh, in attracting investors to, uh, to, uh, to put money in your business. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the very end of our webinar for today. Uh, thank you very much for having joined us. Uh, and thank you very much for participating. Uh, have a good weekend. Uh, happy Labor Day and uh, uh, and see you next Wednesday and Friday. Uh, thank you very much our participants, I mean our panelists. Um, thank you very much for the Sandbox team on the back end uh, for providing the technical support. We appreciate what you've done for us and we look forward to seeing you next week. From myself, Chris Odongo, uh, and the entire Sandbox team, do have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.